Hello and welcome. I am Jan Rösler of the SMA Solar Academy. Today I'll show you how to commission the new SMA Data Manager M via the installation assistant. We connect the Data Manager to our computer via an Ethernet cable. After the My release, a Wi Fi connection will also be possible. The Data Manager must be part of a network with a DHCP server, for example, a standard router. Then we can access it via our web browser. The DHCP server provides an IP address for the data manager, which we can then enter into our web browser directly. This is what I'm going to do just now. If your system supports MDNS services, you can directly enter SMA followed by the serial number of the data manager into your web browser instead. After this, your web browser might display a warning message. However, that can be ignored. We are now on the start screen of the not yet commissioned SMA Data Manager M. If you need further information, you can always click on the question mark in the top right corner. This will help open a help dialog. In this configuration step, you can change the network configuration if required. For this, you click on change the network configuration. However, this is normally not necessary, so we can leave it on automatic configuration switched on yes. By the way, by clicking on the information symbol, you can open a dialog that provides additional information on exactly this point. But as I said, we don't need to change anything here, so we can simply click on cancel. Then click on continue and we will go to the next configuration step. In this configuration step, you do the administrator registration. You can set your username, best note this down somewhere, and your password. For IT safety reasons, the password must have a sufficient length and consist of combination of both numbers, letters, and special characters. Once that is done, we click on register in the down right corner and are led to the next configuration step. In the next configuration step, you first type in the device name. Then you can select to have the data manager receive automatic security and feature updates, which makes a lot of sense. And that it is synchronized with Sunny Portal, which is mandatory right now. This is why this box must definitely be ticked. In addition, you can also select to have the data manager update all connected SMA devices. Now you have to enter the PB system password of the connected SMA devices. If no password has been set yet, you can even enter a password that is then applied to the SMA devices in delivery state. At this stage, please also pay attention of using a safe password meaning a password containing of at least eight symbols and a combination of letters, numbers, and special characters. Then click on Search Devices. This establishes a communication with the connected SMA devices, which are then displayed in the next step after clicking on Continue. In this step, you have the option to set other names for the devices found. For example, I'm going to name the core one, core one. Please select all the devices that you want to integrate. So typically just click on select all. Then go to save. In the next step, you can integrate additional Modbus devices by clicking on that plus symbol here. We will cover this topic in detail in a separate tech tip, so we can just skip it here. Therefore, simply click on Save and on to the next step. The following step is very important in my opinion, as it means a big simplification in setting up the complete site. By selecting Yes at this option here, 
the chosen country standards will automatically be transferred to all connected SMA devices. So you just have to choose it once and the rest of the setup work will be done by the data manager. Also, the entry of a grid guard code is not necessary anymore. In this configuration step, we can configure the energy meter. For this, we choose the energy meter as the device and the appropriate channel, so either grid feed-in or grid reference counter. Since the SMA energy meter is a bidirectional meter, we can choose the one device for both channels or both purposes. The PV generation will be measured by the SMA inverters itself. So we're done with this step as well. So simply click on continue then. In this step, we could activate the Modbus server inside the data manager. But as I mentioned beforehand, the whole Modbus topic will be covered in depth in the next tech tip. So we simply leave this deactivated and go on by clicking on continue to the next configuration step. This now is a very important configuration step again, because now we can choose the external power control. So if we want to give a set point for active power or reactive power, we have to activate or tick this here accordingly. We want to control active power, so this is what we choose. The simplest way of controlling the active power would be through an open loop control. So we just leave the setting like that. And then choose the source for the signal, which in our case now, easiest case will be digital inputs. Using the digital inputs on the data manager itself. We are then able to configure these digital inputs more precisely to which limits the data manager will translate the digital inputs. But normally the default configuration, in this case 0, 30, 60 and 100% are already in accordance with the grid operator's requirements. Furthermore, you can configure a fallback behavior at this stage as well meaning a fallback to a predefined behavior in case of an invalid or non-existent signal combination. But you can normally just leave this at the default setting in case there are no different requirements from the grid operator. With another click on continue, this step has been successfully completed as well. So we click on continue here, go on to the next step. At this next step, we can also define the modification speed of the set point, or in other words, the active power gradient. In order to do this, we simply choose active at this point, and then the currently configured active power gradient, in our case a maximum of 20% per second, would be activated. This limitation of the active power gradient is required by some grid operators. Should this not be the case, you would not have to activate this option here, of course. We just have the last chance now as a setup to set the frequency of repetition for that set point, active power set point. This is yet another thing that the grid operator needs to tell us. So if the grid operator is fine with uh, the frequency repetition 20 seconds and the defined system power well that is actually the total power of all the pv inverters connected to the system and that is fine as well we click on continue and we're done congratulations now you have successfully configured your sma data manager amp